mad at him because he moved to Colorado. There's a lot of us that are mad at him because he's so full of knowledge. It's amazing how he helped my business, my previous business that I was in. I'd come to the meeting and I'd say, hey, what's new? And he'd just rattle all this stuff off and I'd run back to the office and implement it. It was amazing, amazing information that he gives freely to each and every one of us. And I am so honored to be able to introduce Bill Hartzer. Bill, come on up. You don't need that. You got that? Yeah. Oh, you want this too? Something to hold on. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, lost, I lost it when I, when I moved from, <clears throat> from Texas and sold my, sold our ranch and, and up to, um, yeah, and went up to, went up to Colorado. So, so happy to, you know, be here and be able to replace the the one and only Dwayne Foster for years. Dwayne has been, you know, a fixture of a state of search at after every, you know, the end of the end of um, the end of state of search. So try, try to think about, you know, what would, you know, what would um, be a great, great kind of presentation. You know, you know, and you know, I wanted to kind of go back over the years. But I first hear the song, you know, "Back to the Future" and that and that whole um, you know movie and so forth. And but let's go kind of back and go from the '90s when I first kind of started SEO and actually doing doing it. And let's go through you know the uh, each decade because. The 90s were back uh, last century, if you can believe it. So first, I want to thank our, uh, the sponsors. I know State of Search is, you know, will we'll not be here without our sponsors. So Search Analytics, SEM Rush Local, Base Search Marketing, Shane Arts, Idea Growth, Push Fire, The Transparency Agency, PCG, Digital, and Imaginuity. Um, a little bit about me, um, SEO consultant. I've got my own agency. I've been, you know, at, at various agencies over the years. I started in house, kind of a technical writer, and went to webmaster and 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 doing um, SEO in house. Um, I've got a a site, kind of my side gig, side project, because that's the side hustle. Everybody's got to have a side hustle, right? Is DN Protect? You can run through, uh, put any domain name in there, and you do. It does automatically due diligence and tells you uh, if you've got your domain name set up properly. Um, I'm an SEO advisor at Hennessy Digital, plus about another half a dozen agencies um, around. Um, I've got a blog, uh, BillHartzer.com. I, you know, I co-founded DFW SEM back in 2004. Uh, still, the uh, US. Some brand, brand ambassador from Majestic and uh, OnCrawl um, and a couple of different agencies in Dallas. I've worked at uh, Vision, Standing, Brunner, Standing Dog, Face Interactive, Vice Local. Center. So let's start back. I mean, SEO in the 1990s, the 2000s, 2010s, 2020s, and then I'll talk about a little bit SEO in the future. Yeah, so what, what was SEO like in the 90s, in you know, 94, 95? you know, et cetera. Um, you know, much of the time where actually there was no SEO, there was no SEO industry to rely on. I mean, people sharing information, and that's how we, we learn SEO, right? By, by, you know, SEO Signal Lab, face, you know, the Facebook group, people sharing, asking questions. SEM Rush, you know, has a great Facebook group. It's all about, you know, this industry sharing information with others. I mean, I mean, we're not, not actually competitors. We're SEOs, and we talk to each other. But at that time, there was no SEO industry at all. No one sh shared, like, SEO secrets about, you know, what's, what um, if you do this and change this on your site, you know, that, that you'll probably rank better. There was no list of ranking factors. <clears throat> and, you know, Moz, Moz did not exist. Moz didn't put out, you know, a right list of ranking factors of, you know, 200 ranking factors, but I have, 
you know, I have a list now in, in what, 2022 of 983 ranking factors. If, if, if you're interested in that list, I'll, I'll give it to you. Um, it was in the 94, 95, it was every man for himself. We didn't share information. You just had to get rankings. I mean, and you had to figure that out. There was no SEO. Every webmaster, every site owner, every, every business owner, every affiliate marketer, you know, we all had one goal. We wanted to drive traffic to our sites and get, and, and get stored visits. I mean, that, that was our, our goal as, 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 you know, mar as marketers on, on the web. We're putting up sites. Uh, uh, the first Blockbuster started, store was opened in Dallas in, in uh, not October 19th, 1985. I mean, that's just mind-blowing to me now, you know, so long. So how did we get traffic in the 90s? We're thinking about you know, not Yahoo Directory was founded in 94, Excite, search engine, 94, Blyco's 94, WorkSmart 95, Altivist 95, and DMOZ, which now uh, it doesn't exist, but 1998. So I actually focused most on AltaVista because that really was, was gameable. I, you know, if that even was a word back then, um, we could get rankings. And that, that's where most of our traffic goes. Um, came from. So there actually were search engine ranking factors. You could change something on a page and, and rank. And in Alta Vista, we, you know, it was never, you know, we never talked about it or anything. But, um, you know, there were all, you know, on page factors, it was one page at a time. So you could get a keyword, say, I want to show up in the search results for that particular keyword. And that was it. There was no, you know, um, you know, internal links. It doesn't. It didn't matter, you know, uh, uh, the content on your site, whether it was, you know, whether it was all like you could have, you know, a, a rank for a sports or basketball basketball keyword and and then a yoga keyword and so forth. Um, no internal ranking factors. The keyword in the title tag at the beginning of the title tag. That was like the, the, one of the biggest things. That they what mattered, and that's still today. That has not changed. I don't think it'll change in the future. A keyword in the title tag, ranking factor, a keyword in the meta description tag, keyword density. Keyword density was huge. So I looked back. You know, keyword density. It was is essentially the percentage of times mentioned on the page based on the overall word count. So 100 words on the page, for example, if you mention that keyword 10 times, it was 10 percent keyword. That's it. was pretty simple to kind of figure it out. I look back at my archives, and actually, I have a text file. Uh, um, so I, I don't know why, but I have this text file, and this was, was the perfect keyword density for Alta Vista in 19, I believe it was 1996, 1997. Uh, um, and this, they use short story. So Alta Vista, in my belief, they figured out their algorithm was was based on keyword density. It was 6.7% keyword density. And if you, you if you literally took this story, you had your keyword in your title tag, keyword in the meta description tag, you, you changed out your keywords. Let's say red widgets. So you want to rank for red widgets. It would be something like he found a beautiful young English red widget of which his father was most proud. And and we literally just did search and replace and put that, that content already on the page. It was the perfect keyword density. Now it turns out that what those that, that's the that, that's the short story. But actually most websites hid and cloaked that. Because if they if you figure if they didn't want anybody to know that they figured out the keyword density percentage. And so what what would happen is you could literally go, you know, you would go go do a search for a popular keyword, find the search short story of the day with the current, the keyword density and percentage. And literally, if you could get past the JavaScript redirect, um, then on the page that everybody had, because remember, search engines at that time never executed the JavaScript. So we could redirect to other pages. We could throw up other content, all sorts of stuff. I believe it was probably around 2015 where we really started to see Google said, it was saying, Oh, well, now we're executing JavaScript. 
and now we can actually see what you know everything that the human sees on the page. Now that's but at that time it was 96, 97. We were using JavaScript redirects. You know, you analyze the short story content, find out how many pages, how many words you needed, either you use that short story that everybody else is using, or write your own content at the same keyword density and same, you know, but that was a little bit more work. Um, so basically, you know, here's the fun thing was you would create, if you created your page, you could actually submit to Alta Vista, fill out the form on their page, the submission form, as long as you did it by 8 a.m. Central Time. And I remember because every morning before work, before driving from, you know, driving, uh, you know, to work, I would create my, start my, you know, computer, create the page, submit it by 8 a.m. And by 8.30, it would rank for 24 hours until that whole process, you know, went again. So that was kind of the fun back in, you know, 96, 97. We have to mention, it was the late 90s. PB started, PBC started um, in 1998, 1998 uh, as go to.com, later turned Overture, and then and Yahoo Search Marketing. Um, Google started their search engine advertising in 1999, um, but it was October something. This, this is the 22nd year. Um, I believe, like, tw you know, October 18th or something like that, um, where Google AdWords was actually first introduced. So let's move on to the 2000s and early 2000s. That, that was the, the biggest change we I saw and the SEO industry kind of saw was Google introduced links as a, a ranking factor. Now this is the modern day um, link graph from Majestic. However, as you see the target, you know, uh, target site in the middle and you see the tiered links, you know, one website linking to the main website site and so forth. And that's what you know Google actually introduced. And that's really that shifted everything from on page only to now links. So ranking the 2000s, um, you know, I constantly saw over and over that it was small, smaller and smaller percentage. You know, we're talking Google here, um, smaller, smaller percentage on page SEO and then larger relying more on links and links and links to ultimately they had to actually recorrect you know this nightmare of links that they that you know that they generated um it was all, all about exact match anchor text you had more links from other websites uh, not on the same class a c block of ip addresses that you had more links exact match anchor text pointing to your site you know you had 27 and your competitor had 26 and you got you got to rank them um we had this page rank toolbar it was only updated every few months you know visibly like you know page rank zero to ten and, and which kind of is like a ver uh, an older version of you know domain authority or, or trust flow or something like that um it was only updated every few months and so once you got a page rank whatever then you could actually uh you know then you had that page rank six or page rank rank seven unfortunately the trick was uh, is that if you read actually if you redirected your page with a 301 redirect to um, let's say a page on CNN was the page rank nine, and then when once that page rank was updated, toolbar was updated, then you switch up, turn off the redirect, and bingo, you would have a page rank nine for three or four, four months, and so that was what you know that was a lot of what the black you know black hats were doing. Um, and that, that's how they essentially sold links as, as pay, you know, page rank. Um, you, you could buy links. And so basically that turned into, you know, where basically the SEO strategy was buying links and buying text link ads wherever you could. Um, there's a certain, you know, text link ads com was thriving. You know, people were buying and selling. Um, so, you know, there were, there were people buying expired domain names and redirecting them. Um, and, and, you know, even the larger organizations, I had developed, I had bought expired domain names and put up blogs because, you know, I was a technical writer and wrote a lot and, and so forth. And basically, basically I'll put, put up, you know, 80 to 100, 100, 200 blogs. And frankly, I was selling 
TextLink ads and making you know making a fair amount. We had Google AdSense, but also the TextLink ads, and the even larger organizations. I mean, large, you know, the Targets and WalMarts and so forth. They were buying TextLink ads. I mean, and they were showing up on you know sites I knew about and and owned and so forth. It, it just got out of hand. I mean, really, it got out of hand. Google had to actually fix this. It was crazy. But then we had the Google Florida update. That was named because PubCon conference was in Orlando, in Orlando, Florida, going on when Google released that update. And as SEO, we actually got to name the updates. So this was the famous Google Florida update that basically happened in November 2023, right before it was so, it affected FX basically how links were calculated across the web, okay? okay? And it was disastrous. I mean, if you were in the industry, Industry. Small businesses had, you know, eight, 8, 10, 12 employees. They literally fired within a week. They had fired all their employees because their traffic had basically gone, you know, basically dropped. You know, it was all from Google Organic. And, and so everybody was, at that time, one of the, one of the things that we were talking about is, is the fact that you cannot rely strictly on Google organic traffic to your site. You've got to have another business plan. And all of these companies right before Christmas laid off people and you know and, and Matt Cutts stood up there and, and and talked about you know to the media. They vowed that they would never run an update right before the holidays. Well that actually changed. They had promised that to us. That they promised that in 2011 that all was thrown out the window. Matt Cutts, you know, was basically not really there anymore. And, and the, the Penguin update in 2011, right before, and then we had a huge, massive hit. If anybody was around. Now, we, as SEO goes, we we're spending all our time cleaning up all the links so we could get unpenguinized. So 2000s, you know, algorithm updates were not every day. Like, you know, we're actually seeing like 5,000 updates every year from Google now, it was like, you know, a Florida update, and then wait three or four months, and then another update. And so if you had rankings, then you, your rankings, you know, you were, it was easy, super easy. You could, you know, you could put the top up down and, and drive around town, you know, and go to the beach. You didn't have to do any work as an SEO because for three or four months, and then all of a sudden it was another Google update because you had all these rankings, right? Um, we didn't have any rankings changes until another Google update. You know, I mean, so they, they begin to run out, you know, towards the end of the 2000s, we started to re see these penalties for text links and so forth. Um, and then what's interesting to note is 2009, Matt Cutts, you know, when he was talking about social signals, because Twitter was coming out, Facebook likes, you know, um, and so forth, and tweets and so forth. They were, we're trying to figure out as SEO was at that time, like, okay, well, if we tweet something, or, you know, is it going to help our ranking? Or if we Facebook, you know, like something on Facebook or any social media site, is it going to help us? Well, his, their answer at that time was, it's actually going to take them 10 years to fully trust the social signals like Facebook likes and so forth. So basically, the first year they would, the first year they would, you know, look at a Facebook like and say, okay, well, it's, you know, uh, we're going to trust it 10% of the time. 2019, if we look at that time frame, 2019, they fully understand and trust social signals. Um, and they've got to figure it out. It takes that, actually their algorithms that long. Um, so two, other 2000s, content. I mean, you know, on our, our sites, blogs. I mean, every company, we had, we, you know, the, the SEO strategy was you have your main site or your site service pages, that really change, and then you add a blog, right? Um, whether blog domain, domain.com or company name.com slash blog, and then you promoted that, you, you you make it shareable, and so forth. That was, you know, all, all the rage. And everybody, you know, every site had to have a blog. Every company had to have a blog where they could share it on, you know, on Dig and Delicious and, and, and so forth, right? Um, the, the strategy, post on your blog, share it on, you know, stumble upon, 
for traffic, um, and then you know try and get human views, um, try and get natural links to the site. And the question was, you know, social bookmarks. We were doing all the social bookmarks from, you know, from uh, you know from uh, all, all sorts of sites. Um, directories were actually counted as links, like you know, all, and so everybody built a, you know, all sorts of niche directories, and we had direct, you know, we had directory software we could put on our site and, and just have, you know, fill it fill it with links. And outgoing links, but SEO in the 2000s, you know, SEOs found the loop. We continue to find loopholes in the algorithms, and 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 you know, what I have found is many. If I looked at a list and I of all the Google algorithm updates, right, from that Moz had listed, and I found literally as you go through that list of you know 30 something plus algorithm updates. The Google's algorithm up, algorithm updates were actually to fix something that we all broke, okay, and that we were something that we exploited. I mean, like links. Okay, they said to us, "You got to get links. You got to get links." Okay, we got massive amounts of links, right? Then Google had to be reactive and go back and say, "Well, you know, that's why you know they had to fix everything." And we've seen over and over again, all these Google algorithm updates, except for a few of them, most of them were Google responding to us. And, you know, we think about that. SEOs have the power. We have the power to, like, influence this. And if we don't, you know, if we do it too much, well, Google's going to slap us. And so Google, we, we were influencing Google more. SEOs were then, and, and because they were reactive in reacting to our, what we had done. 2010s, you know, this is one of the biggest things that changed SEO forever, in my opinion. If I'm looking back at the, you know, for the past 20, 30, you know, from the past century back to, back to now, SEO changed forever on that particular date because they announced the secure search update. Every login Google user would default to HTTPS. And that meant we actually started seeing not, not provided in Google Analytics. And, you know, there's SEOs here I know that are really great SEOs, have 10, 10 years of experience. And that, that's, that's a lot. You know, you never actually experience the, the joy of being able to see every single keyword that somebody searched in Google and hit your site and then track that back all to the conversion and the sale, you know, and actually know what keyword someone searched for to get a sale. And we had that before we, we had not provided. And they basically, Google, you know, took the keywords away from us. And, you know, that made it much more difficult. Um, look at some of these algorithm updates. I mean, they came more and more frequently in the, you know, in the 2010s. Um, we had a Google negative reviews update um, in 2010. If you can imagine, 12 years ago, they launched Google Places, and that is now Google My Business Profile was previously Google My Business. Um, I mean, I can't believe it's been 10 years. It was where you could get a, you had listings on Google Maps, and then they launched Places, and now you could create your you know a, a, your listing. Um, we had the search, you know, search, secure search update. We had Panda, Penguin, the exact match domain update. Um, and then we started to see the next big round was Google Hummingbird, where basically Google was previously, they were just looking exactly at the keyword. And then that changed because they started to consider the context of your keyword and, and show results that. Um, we had another HTTPS update in 2014. And then we had um, Rank, Bain, Rank Brain. They had, you know, used been using machine learn, learning um, for a few months. Um, we had Google, you know, so mobile friendly update actually was something not that was. I don't. I think that was more proactive versus reactive a type of update. So we ha so in the case where we everybody is moving and and to a mobile phone, so they were proactive and saying okay we need to also move our websites and make it mobile friendly. 
which makes sense. And so that's what I would consider proactive versus reactive. Um, 2017, you know, HTTP, HTTPS, we had lost 50% of, you know, of our keywords um, due to, uh, you know, and 50% were not provided. And the only difference there is that go till this day, Google ads, actually we see all the keywords and what people search for. And we obviously have to pay for them and pay for that data versus you know, organic, they were just giving those keywords to us for free that they then took away. So other updates, um, and then obviously, you know, it looked to me like around 2019, we started to see these core updates, which continued. And so we don't see like, you know, now we don't see them really being so much being uh, reactive to what SEOs are doing. You know, it's changed a little bit. You know, looking back at what I, you know, I did when I was at agencies and, and, and doing, you know, on the hands SEO, um, I spend more of my time being react, reacting to Google updates, like, you know, Penguin hit and, and we have all sorts of clients hit. And so we had to go back and change that um, and spending, you know, it was, it used to be that it was mainly one algorithm in the 2010s, you know, and previously for all search queries, like, you know, it didn't matter whether or not, you know, you had like the same search engine ranking factors list, you know, for one search keyword query versus, uh, you know, now um, the different ranking factors are applied to different search queries and different keywords. So 2020s, we all found about, about yesterday and today what, you know, what were, what, SEO was like in the 2020s, right? Um, we found everything, but you know, back looking back, a site structure, um, tactical, right? You know, tactical SEO is extremely important now, right? I mean, it's it's we need to have good, clean sites, and that's mainly for crawling and indexing. Um, we got to, you know, if we if a page is not indexed and not and not even being crawled, well, it can't rank. Um, and, you know, I'm seeing more and more of a shift back to the basic, back to, we're not back to keyword density. We're not back to those days. However, you know, whether something is bold, italic, using a strong tag versus bold, um, embedding a video on the page, you know, those are really basic SEO on-page stuff that, you know, that we can do. Um, and we're, you know, that actually helps, right? And we're back to these basics, you know, internal links, having a good site structure. So the future, let's fi fi figure out what the future is. You know, is SEO dead? Well, no, not really, because I just told you that technical SEO is, is extremely important, right? But I'm so glad that Google is now considering privacy. I mean, they're, they're you know, I, you have to kind of look at this picture, but you know, Google's taking privacy, you know, very seriously and, you know, especially with HTTPS, but they're taking it so seriously in this picture that they have, um, they have blurred out automatically the face of a cow. So, you know, obviously we'll have to deal with Google's AI. Looking back though, it could be 10 years by the time we, from whenever they started to use that to, that because it takes them very long to trust all these signals and figure out their, everything out. They might be going a little faster, but this, you know, the Search Engine Journal article um, is definitely worth uh, taking a look at. Um, I mean, it's, it's mind blowing now that to me that, you know, we can, they can use an AI and figure out whether or not someone's, you know, uh, expressing sorrow or anger or being surprised and so forth. And they can also figure out, you know, for image search, the difference between a horse and a person and, and so forth, right? So this is going to be interesting, you know, as, as we go forward. About, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, John Mueller, which is, who's obviously, a, a, you know, a representative of Google, um, he fully endorsed this list as us being um, changing SEO and our language that we're using. So we're actually, you know, webmaster, we're not supposed to use the word webmaster anymore. This is kind of controversial and some people will say, this is ridiculous. Some people will say, great. 
I'm not going to, you know, give my opinion. Blacklist is now, um, you know, not allowed list or not approved list. White Hat SEO is now approved SEO tactics. We're not supposed to use White Hat anymore. Black Hat SEO, nope, it's not black and white anymore. It is uh, frowned upon, approved SEO tactics, et cetera. Um, and again, webmaster no longer. So website owner, web ad, website admin, web content manager. Um, this is, you know, a lot of people in the SEO industry have a lot of opinions on this. And that's what's happening. Um, this is, like I said, past week or two. Looking for the future, we, you know, as SEOs, we need to look at entity SEO. And if you're not familiar with the knowledge graph and having a knowledge panel and so forth, and it's not just getting a you know Google a Google local listing or Google local panel. It's actually getting into the knowledge graph, getting your brand, your name, etc., and thinking about more about entities rather than you know rather than uh, you know so your brand. I mean your your company name. Okay, we need to start thinking about internal links based on entities that we're mentioning on the page and topics and so forth. Right. So Jason Barnard um, from the UK is is has a great a lot of uh, I, I I rarely publicly come out and state you know and and in, you know and and endorse others, but the, he is his I've worked with him a little bit, um, and definitely everything he's talking about entity SEO. This is actually the future of SEO, right? The future of SEO. Google will probably figure out. The difference between AI generated content and human content. I think they're they're trying. That's one of their goals, and so you know, and and they'll will figure it out at some point. I don't know when. Um, Google, no doubt, will still make changes to Google Ads that favor them and make their mo them more money. They'll make changes to exact match versus phrase match versus whatever other match they want to come up with, but they'll continue to make, you know, make changes to Google ads, um, on page and on site SEO, more important technical SEO. Um, some ranking factors will probably not change in the future. Title tag, keyword in the title tag at the beginning of title tag. And, you know, that's that's hasn't changed since 1994 95 um i don't think it'll change in the future right now i you know i've have a list of 983 ranking factors i think they're going to add more ranking factors as they as as they're as they go along um that's a great list to look at and you know it's going to take several years for google to trust you know, like new ranking factors that come out. I, they're not going to just say, okay, well, you know, uh, they're not going to allow SEOs to find this new ranking factor and, and change it and it'll, you know, be uh, great for your rankings. So what is the future of SEO? The future as SEO is bright, it's not dead. And um, that's all I have for this evening. I also have another announcement um, that I would like to make that um, GIFT WSEM and state of search is actually changing and starting right now. Um, GIFT WSEM is being rebranded. So change and the board and, and the um, board, of, you know, has, has made that change. And starting now, uh, it's not necessarily the digital search at DFW search engine marketing association, but now DFW WSCM is known as Data Search. Right? Thanks, guys.